Hello, and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. Last time we talked about program startup and how we enter the startup routine before calling main. This time we look at program termination, even though we touched on that a little bit in the last segment. Remember how we started out last time? We just printed the address of main, and then fell off main without returning an explicit value. With our default compiler options, the return value was zero. But if we compiled the program with standard C89, we got a warning about the missing return value and observed our program to return a mysterious value of 20. Which just so happens to be the length of the message printed by printf. So let's compare what the difference is between the instructions generated when using C89 and when using C11. For that, we use the OBJ dump utility to disassemble the executable. Let's look for the main function. Over here, we see the call to printf followed by us returning from the function without any further action. Now, let's compile it using the default GNU C11 standard. Disassemble that and compare. The difference between the code generated is minimal. The lines starting with a plus are the C89 code, the ones starting with a minus are C11. They are almost identical, but at the C11 code we see an explicit statement to move the value 0 into the return value register EIX before returning. Okay. So it seems that the C programming language was changed to default to a return value of zero if no value was explicitly specified. After all, we didn't really do anything with the return value of our printf call. So let's change that. What happens if we assign the return value to a variable? Let's see. When we compile the code, we now get a warning about the integer n being set, but not being used. Smart little compiler. Our return value, though, remains unchanged. So let's again disassemble the code. And then compare to C89 code. There too we get the same warning, but we also again see the letter warning about an explicit return value missing. So let's look at the C89 assembly. Here, inside of main, we see that we are using the return value of printf and move it to a general purpose register, a step representing the assignment of the value to our integer n before we return from the function. In comparison, in the C11 code, you see the exact same step taking place, but this time it is followed again by the explicit assignment of zero to the return value register. Okay, so assigning the value to a variable by itself doesn't change much. The compiler appears to be smart enough to realize that n isn't really used, hence the warning we get when compiling, and then still explicitly assign zero as the return value as the C11 standard mandates. Now let's compare the code if we do use the return value. Here, let's add a return. Note that now we no longer get a warning, because now we are using the variable. C11 
same behavior for a standard C11 compilation. And when we disassemble both, we should find that the resulting code is now identical. And it looks like so. We call printf, move the return value into the register, then pair the return statement, move the value from that register into the return value register, yielding the expected return code of 20, the total number of characters printed by printf. Okay, so with this in our previous video, we've already seen multiple ways of how a process can terminate. On the one hand, there is normal, i.e. expected termination. We've seen implicit return from main, which may yield a different return value depending on the C standard in question. Explicit return from main, a call to the exit library function, which can happen from within main or from any other function. But there's also the underscore exit syscall, as well as, oddly, an uppercase variation thereof. We got underscore uppercase exit as a gift of discrepancies between the C language standard, which requires upper letter exit, and POSIX, which requires underscore lower E exit. Yay standards. Then there are two ways that only apply to multi-threaded programs, which we'll skip over here. Aside from that, we also have abnormal ways to terminate a process. We can call a board. We may be terminated by a signal, such as 6 v or 6 kill. And again, if we're multi-threaded, we might terminate upon a cancellation request. So let's take a look at the exit function. Exit is a library function, so you can already speculate that it wraps the underscore exit syscall and provides additional features. As we know, exit takes an, as argument an integer value that then becomes the exit status of the program. Note that, of course, exit does not return itself. It can't. It leads to the termination of the process, as we just saw in our code exploration. Before exiting, it performs these steps. It calls any functions previously registered as exit handlers via add exit, which we'll see in a minute. It flushes all open output streams and then closes them. It unlinks any files that were created by the process via the temp file function. And finally, it calls underscore exit. Underscore exit, a syscall, can be called directly, and we will then terminate the process immediately without doing any of those things. There are still a few things that happen when you exit a process via this call, but we will revisit those considerations in future lectures when we talk about interprocess communications and signals. So as noted, the exit library function may call any exit handlers that were previously registered via the add exit function. So let's take a look at that. Add exit takes as argument a function pointer for a simple function that takes no arguments and has no return type. Upon success, add exit pushes the function pointer on a stack that exit in turn will pop function pointers off meaning the order in which they are executed at process termination time is the reverse order in which they're registered. There's no reason why we can't have the same function get called multiple times. We just have to register it multiple times. All of this is useful to ensure you perform certain tasks not only when you return from main, but at any time you exit. Let's look at an example. Here we have a few trivial functions that simply print a message. The function func prints a message and then, depending on the number of arguments given, may either exit, underscore exit, or abort the program. In main, we register these functions above as exit handlers via add exit. Remember that the func functions will be popped off the stack in reverse order than the one we're registering them, so we expect the order at exit time to be my exit one, exit two, in that order. Let's run it. Okay, the order looks as expected. We called func, then returned back into main, 
then return from main, and our exit handlers are called in the order that we saw. If we pass an argument, then we have fun call exit itself, so we observe that we do not return to main, but our registered exit handlers are executed nevertheless, as promised. If we pass a second argument, then func will call underscore exit, which will terminate the process immediately without triggering the calls to the exit handlers. And finally, with a third argument passed, func will call abort, and we exit through calling the exit handler, but this time with a core dump. Inspecting the core dump, we can see the backtrace and then find the exact location in the code where the program was terminated by the sick abort signal. appears to have happened on line 36 in exit handler C, list the code, and we can of course inspect the variables at the time of execution. All right, so let's look at the lifetime of a Unix process in this illustration. The new process comes to live via exec from the kernel, and then enters the C startup routine in user space, which ends up calling main. Main may call any number of functions, which ultimately return to main. After main returns, we're back in the C startup routine, which calls exit, from where we leave user space and terminate the process via underscore exit. However, we can also call exit ourselves from within main, or any function really. Exit may call any exit handlers that were previously registered via add exit, and then perform some cleanup of IO streams or temporary files before calling underscore exit. But we also have the option of calling underscore exit ourselves from within main or any other function. Okay, time for a recap. We've seen a number of ways of exit from a program. Returning from main either explicitly or implicitly will lead to a call to exit via the C startup routine. The return value depends on whether or not you passed one in, as well as on the C standard version you're following. We can exit or underscore exit ourselves at any time. If we perform certain tasks that we'd like to, if we have certain tasks that we'd like to be performed whenever our program terminates, we can register exit handlers via add exit. These exit handlers are circumvented by calling underscore exit or abort. What happens to other processes when our program terminates finally is something we'll discuss in a future lecture. And with that, it's time to exit this video segment. Thanks for watching. Cheers.